Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. So good to be with you once again. Welcome to the place that you will find everything you need to get the cleaning company. You've always wanted the cleaning company that you deserve. If you want to be a guest on the show, if you've got questions for me personally, or you want to hire me to speak at your next event, Natalie, our producer, does all that stuff. Nat, N-A-T, at growmycleaningcompany.com. Of course, you can call us at 480-648-5149. Do it now. We love hearing from you, Cleaning Nation. Today, we are chatting with a friend of mine and uh, a guy that's been doing my personal and business taxes for feels like three or four years now, uh, not to mention a good guy, Greg White from White & Associates. Uh, he, we're going to talk everything about taxes, about bookkeeping, everything you need to know on the accounting side of uh, cleaning companies. If you want to get a hold of Greg and his team, you can do so at www.whitecpafirm.com. Greg, welcome to Cleaning Nation. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, Mike. Glad so, to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. And I want to give the listeners a little background of why uh, I invited Greg on is at this time in our life. Uh, what's happened is for all my private clients and even some of the group clients, I've started running into the same roadblock of, hey, guys, first and foremost, we've got to get your books straight, right? There's a lot of questions about how do I grow or what do I do or you know, just general business questions. And a lot of them for me went back to, well, let's look at your books. Let's see where you're at now, right? Let's not add a bunch of new customers if we don't have a profitable model. Let's, if we don't have a profitable model, let's be real clear on what's, what's out of whack. Is it your cost of goods sold? Is your, is your overhead? Do you not have enough sales? What's the problem? And sadly I found, and this is with little brand new companies and some pretty big companies with some pretty good revenue. They didn't have a clean set of books. They were a mess. So and that's a problem, right? Because when we go to make these decisions, we need raw data and that data has got to be clean. So a lot of people, are like, oh, I've got my books. I just haven't looked at them. They, they pull up a and I'm like, what's this? What's this? I don't know. That shouldn't go there. This doesn't make any sense. Anyway, uh, and I, we, I don't want to say wasting, but we were spending a lot of time in coaching trying to walk through that. And I've been a business owner for 20 years, so I know a little bit about accounting, but it's not my, I'm not an expert like Greg. And long story short, because I'm a lazy, lazy human being, I'm like, I'm going to send everybody to Greg and his people and let them do all of that amazing work and uh, get out of the helping uh, owners of cleaning companies with their accounting stuff. So that is why we're here. And my hopes and dreams for Greg is that he can just kind of share some feedback in terms of instead of me yakking about why books are important, are they important? Is Mike just insane? So, Greg, why don't we start there? What are you? What is your take from? And the cool thing you guys need to know is the cool thing about owners of uh, CPA firms is they get to see a lot of different books from a lot of different companies. They know who makes money and who doesn't make money. So I'm gonna hitch up for a couple of things, Greg. First, how important are books and how can we use them? And second. You know, you kind of know who makes money. What maybe you can kind of share some some themes of the guys that typically are successful and make money do this, and the people that are struggling do that. So that's a big, fat, wide open question. I'm going to shut up. Talk to me, friend. Okay, so perfect. Uh, first off, on on the books, it, it, on a on a compliance issue, you obviously have to have good accounting records to, to file a tax return. Uh, so that that is no question. You know, there's no question on that to start with. So. With that aside, though, not having good books, it, it doesn't allow you to, you know, make decisions for, you know, even today and in the future. Uh, a lot of times we see people come in and they literally have no idea if they've made money. Yep. I've had to counsel people to actually shut their business down because they've lost so much money uh, and, you know, they would not, you know, comply and do their books and keep them up to date. Uh, other times, you know, they, 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 it, the decision-making process is just so much more fluid, so much more timely, and so much more useful for the business owner to have up-to-date books. It, it's important not only to know what you can take home as a business owner, I assume most of these uh, are, are, you know, just like any other small business owner, either there's one or two owners in the business. And, you know, I've seen owners, you know, deplete the, the operating capital that they need to run their business. 
thinking that they have the funds to do that, which is never a good idea. Uh, you know, you live within your means. The, the the books will show you that. And as your business grows and you use those books to try to figure out not only how to grow my business more, you know, you can always take in, you know, take more out of the business, but you, you should really know where you're at at first. Uh, you should know if your margins are where they need to be. If you are making, you know, uh, per jobs, obviously it's a cleaning business. So, so you, I assume they, 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 you're helping them price their, the, the jobs out that they're, they're getting. But if they, if they can, if they can see in real time what that is, it, it helps. And with today's technology, there's no reason not to be up to date on your books. So that's uh, a, it is time. Con- Go yeah, ahead. That's something I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt, but that's such a big point. I want to make sure I get your take on it before we move forward. I get a lot of, maybe it's not even verbal, but the, the, the sentiment is it's too much. I don't have time. It's scary. I kind of quote unquote, know I should be doing it, but I'm scared. I went in there before and they were a mess and you're going to make fun of me or I'm going to feel bad. Cause there's you know that kind of a thing. Can you have any words of encouragement or is that just how it is in terms of they're hard and scary? Well, you know, the, the, the thing is with, like you said, going back to what, what initiated your, your response is with today's technology, you can link everything and it, you know, and most people use QuickBooks, and I'm not telling you that you have to use QuickBooks, but it's a very inexpensive program. Okay, uh, they have an online version, they have a desktop version, but with that, it links to your bank and your credit card. You can literally update your books in a timely manner every night. You know, before you go to bed, you can open your iPad or a laptop, hit a couple downloads, look at what's going on. Uh, it's nice to see what your uh, you know what your 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 year over you know year has been, and, and you can run it so it's that same period. So you can make decisions. Am I growing? Is if, if, is what I'm doing not working? You know, if you put out a big mailer, does it work? Well, you don't know if you don't know what your sales are. So with technology, you, you can download it, and and you shouldn't be afraid. Now again. You, most most of us now know how to use computers. You know, 20 years ago, a lot of people were afraid of computers. They didn't know how to use them and stuff. Most people know how to get on a computer now, and, they, and they're comfortable with it. So a couple minutes of, of us, you know, we can show you how to do it. A couple minutes of that, and then we can go through the books when you're done to make sure that they're good. You know, you can send us emails, and we can walk you through it. So, man, you're hitting on so many pain points that I want to make sure we jump into. I absolutely agree. And I think a lot of people out there, and I'm just going to speak for them because I talk to them every day, are like, but you don't know me, Greg. My books are a mess. And it's true, right? They're not to the point where they can spend two minutes a day or a half hour a week kind of keeping on top of it. There's a lot of, well, I have an accountant and I pay them, but I'm scared. I don't understand it. I look at it and it's confusing and it's embarrassing, right? You don't want to come to somebody and be like, I'm a business owner and I don't know my books. I don't know if I'm making any money. So how do you move from, because I'm guessing there's a lot of people out there that either haven't set up their books properly or they quote unquote pay the guy, but they don't really know, right? If I ask them any basic question, they're like, I don't, maybe sales, maybe they can tell me how much incomes come in, but it just kind of seems like this big, scary black hole and they're afraid to dive in and do that work. How do you start? If you're out there and you're kind of scared, you've quote unquote got this accountant, but you don't know what he's doing in there. It's like, you know, behind the black curtain. How do you move from that state to, especially if you're like, well, I get computers. I'm not scared of that, but you know, P and L's and cost of goods sold. And some of these terms scare me and cash versus accrual. I get, you know, how, walk through how someone can get from there to a place of feeling confident. And I understand my books and I'm in control of them. And it doesn't, it's not a part-time job and I don't have to be an accountant or have all this education or background. Talk to me. Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing to do is you do it right. Okay. And, and if you don't do something, you know, every, we all have fears of stuff. Uh, you know, what, I don't care what it is, but you know, we've all been like, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. And I think the key here is to get comfortable, right? But, but you're never going to get comfortable if you don't make that step. You know, you, if you don't take that step to get to that point where you are comfortable. So what I would suggest to someone is, you know, rather it's me or, or their CPA or whoever they work with, go sit down with them and go, okay, this is what I want to accomplish today. Okay. I know my books are a mess, but I, you know, I've, I, I heard on a podcast that I can link my bank account with, with my QuickBooks. Okay. Uh, get, get my downloads and then I can give it to you and you can go through it, you know, or, or you can fix it. And, and what we typically try to do is kind of hold their hand and, and slowly, you know, get them to the point where they can do a lot of it. 
uh, but, but again, just, you know, I don't know how to, I don't know how to clean, uh, I, you know, I'm, I shouldn't say I don't know how to clean. Obviously I don't know how to do it on a professional uh, basis though. And, and that's why we have, you know, specialists in every, every field come, come to the specialist, let them sit down with you, let them, let them get you to a point where you're comfortable. You don't have to be an accountant. You don't have to be a CPA, but get to a point where you have your specific, uh, items that you look for to help you run your business. And that's what I tell them. I just tell them to go do it again. Don't the more you wait, it's not getting better. Yeah. I think that's the problem is there has been a lot of waiting and there's kind of like a shame base. Like I knew I should have done it before and maybe I could have handled it, but now it's been so long and it's going to be a mess. And then I'm guessing at the end of every year, it's a huge more shame. You know, the CPA is like, Hey, what your books are a mess. And you know, what are you a terrible person? All that. So I would fully agree with the do it. And the one thing I want to hit on is as a coach, someone trying to help you grow your business, my least favorite thing to hear is, hey, man, what's your cost of goods sold at? I don't know. I got I got a CP. He handles all that stuff. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm okay with uh, Greg or someone, a professional like him saying, hey, here's what your liability is to the IRS. And I'm okay with him helping you walk through your numbers in terms of, well, here's what the cost of goods sold. And this is what this means. And here's where they should be. I'm okay with all that. But quote unquote, for him to handle it, are you making any money? I don't know. My CPA handles that. That's insanity. You need to handle that and absolutely hire someone that knows what the heck they're talking about to walk you through. But it's not Greg's job to know that you're profitable, right? Like if I said, how much money you got in your wallet, you wouldn't be like, I don't know. I got to call my CPA. Like that's your kind of purview. So I like that Greg said, we walk them through. The last thing I want you to do, Greg or anybody, is just call them and say, handle it. And at the end of the year, tell me how much money I owe in taxes, because that's when you go to him and have that nasty call of, hey, you need to shut down. You're, you're insolvent. You don't have any money. You, you don't have a business here, right? And he can't help you at that point. It's too late because someone else is quote unquote handling it. So I really want to encourage you to have a work with relationship with your accountant and not just, I throw a bunch, I show, throw a shoebox full of receipts at him every year and then run away. Any thoughts on that, Greg? Do you have customers that kind of do that well or do that poorly that you can share with us? Yeah, I mean, yeah, some you know, that's the, that's the thing. You want to get to the point where you're comfortable with your with your business. And if and if you need the CPA to sit with you and explain that to you or go through those numbers on a quarterly basis, you know, do it. I, I sat down with a, a a contractor yesterday as we were going through and he, and he and he's big and has his own internal accountant, okay? Uh, but they're not a CPA, you know, they don't have any professional training to be an accountant. They've just learned the position. And so, so there's still mistakes being made. And we went through the books and, you know, reviewed what we thought needed to be changed or why, but we did it together. He's involved and he's now has, you know, he has skin in the game anyway, because it's his business. He needs to make, at the end of the day, he needs to make money. Uh, that's his goal. He wants, you know, he employs people. Uh, and then he also wants to, to make money for himself. So, you know, the goal obviously is to make money, but by doing that, it enables him to look at the business and go, okay, where am I at? And what's going on? You know, for example, we looked at we looked at uh, he he's a con- he's a contractor, so he has he has work trucks. We were looking at repairs yesterday, and he wants to know why the repairs are higher in 2016 and 15. So now, be, by reviewing his financial statements, it, it 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 engages him to say, oh, I have a question now, and so now he can go back. So so again, I I think it. Hopefully, I'm answering this question, but but rather you do it yourself or have have a meeting with the CPA. Uh, and, and again, with technology, you don't even have to be in the same office. If you, if you use the QuickBooks online, you can do it online and you both can log in and, and, and do it. Uh, you could do it in your, you know, your, your van at, as long as you have Wi-Fi. So, so it, it, it's, it's not a matter of inconvenience anymore. It, it can be done no matter where, where you're at. Again, going back, I think the important thing is to make that step and get comfortable. Yeah, it's funny is when you say about in terms of where you're at and geography, full disclosure, Cleaning Nation, I have never, I mean, Greg knows more about my financials than probably my wife or not our financials, I should say, than anyone else in the world. I've never met this guy face to face. I just realized that we've been, I'd say, friends now for years and we've spent a lot of time together, not just you and I, but you and your staff, and you've prepared our taxes yep. and, and all, and I, we've never met face to face. Nope. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to be face to face anymore with technology today, and you know, and if you if, if if we wanted to, we can get you know you can get on uh, on you know your camera phone and do a uh, whatever it's called. Uh, uh, I don't even know what it's called, but you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Like a Skype or uh, just a video call. Yeah, yeah, Skype. There you go. Or video call. There, there you go. Exactly. So the big. So first and foremost, get get with if you're a just start and do it yourself. 
If you feel like you're not qualified to do that, get an accountant. Get get your books squared. That's step one. And I'm going to ask one more question on that. Step two is going to be get to know what questions need to be asked once you've got those books. And that's something I can absolutely help you with. But if you've got a good accountant, they can help you with that. The problem I get, Greg, is I'll have people, you know, quote unquote, send me their books and they're a mess. So again, I, I don't know any names. I'm not going to use any names, but I'm like, who on God's green earth is preparing these books that you're paying American money to do this? These are a mess. And the problem is they're like, well, I don't, that's why I had you on. Cause I'm like, I felt bad saying, well, this guy's terrible. They're like, well, okay, Mike, I don't want to use someone terrible. Where should I go? I'm like, I don't know. So now I've got somebody. So I know you're good, but again, I've been doing this for 20 years. And I feel like I've got a pretty good picture of what books should look like. So I know how to find quote unquote, a good account versus a bad. How do you tell the difference, right? How do you get where it's really just a bookkeeper or maybe they're not even a bookkeeper? How would you, you know, if you've got a sister that you can't do her, her taxes or help her with her business, how would you help her? determine if the person she's considering hiring is is a good fit or not yeah i mean I, the thing for me is questions typically and, and again as i tell all our new clients i said we're, we're obnoxious and what i mean that by that is we ask a lot of questions and we we will keep a- asking until we get the answers that that not only we want but but the correct answers and, and we you know just like everybody you you know why they are or not by based on the fact that how long you've been doing the job. So, so yes, we, you, if they, if you're, if your account or CPA is not asking you questions, when you give your, give them your books, they're going to be wrong. Okay. I'm just going to tell you right now, because as well as I know, some of my clients, we still ask questions all the time to make sure that we uh, are, are doing it right and getting the things placed where they need to be. And we do write up work or, or bookkeeping for many clients. And we send them out, you know, that some of the stuff gets, 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 we, we you know, uh, common and we understand what, what it is. But a lot of times we, we ask questions and then, at the, you know, sometimes we get clients at the end of the year that, you know, will communicate throughout the year, but they just bring in, the, you know, their books for, for tax return purposes. We always send out questions. We want it. We want to make sure that the information is right. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not only, you know, again, going back to the IRS compliance, but you want your your books right because it's, you want to know if you're making money or if you're losing money. So I think the thing is, if, if your CPA is basically not asking questions, you probably have a problem. All right. With those questions, let, give me a couple. Uh, and again, obviously, this is going to be generic, but give me a couple questions that you would expect a qualified CPA or someone that knows what they're doing and really has your best interest at heart that they should be asking you. And there may be a couple questions that you feel that you that cleaning nation should be asking their prospective CPAs. Yeah. I mean, you know, we'll go through the whole balance sheet. You know, it's interesting how many business owners look to the uh, profit and loss or income statement first. They they immediately want to know if they made money. Well, just because your, your profit and loss or your income statement is not correct unless your balance sheet is correct. So for example, do you reconcile your bank account? That's, that should be by far the, the first question. And, and we always look if you have a QuickBooks file. If it's not in QuickBooks and in the, you know in another accounting software that we may not have the same same software here at our office, we always ask that question. So that be, should, should be the first question. And and everything goes through your bank account. And, and and you say, well, does it really? Well, you know, we immediately know typically if someone bought a new car, okay? Because now they're having this payment to, you know, let's say they bought a Toyota, Toyota Finance Company, you know, corporation or whatever. We know they, they may not have booked the, you know, the vehicle, but we know that there's now being a payment made. But if the bank is not done, we don't know that that check has been written to, to the finance company or credit union or whatever. Okay. So it's important. So, so for, that's the, by far the first thing we ask. You know, the, you're first, the first thing that you want someone to make sure that you're hearing when you're looking at someone is that you want them to be interested in and really get what or how you reconcile your bank statement, correct? Yeah. I mean, it's got to be done. If it's not sure. done, your books are wrong. Okay. There's a okay. great start. Go ahead. Yeah. Without fail, they're wrong. And then we just go through the balance sheet. You know, and again, you probably have a, you know, in, in the cleaning business, they probably have some trucks and, and some equipment or some vehicles, uh, vans, whatever. We'll, we'll go through and make sure that we have all those. We'll make sure the loan balances, it, it, what the interest charges were for the loans. You know, a lot of people just don't know how to, you know, enter them properly when they do it. But we'll just go through and we'll clean that balance sheet up. And as soon as that balance sheet's clean, the income statement follows. Okay. At that point, we'll go through and clean the, the income statement. If, if the balance sheet's right, the net income is correct. 
they may not be classified properly in the income statement. So for for reporting purposes, it's not going to be necessarily correct. Or for you know management purposes, they may not be correct because you have things in the wrong categories. But the net the net income would be correct. Okay, as long as the balance sheet's correct. All right, let me so, hold on. Let me repeat that back just to make sure. Hey, I'm clear and that Clean Nation is clear. What I hear you saying is, if the balance sheet and again, just quick background, balance sheet is assets and liability what you own and what you owe, right? Has nothing to do with cash in or cash out. It is what you owe and what you own. Profit and loss is very much what it sounds like. Cash in and cash out. So like Craig, like Greg said, if you've got a truck, that would be an asset on your balance sheet. If you make a payment that costs you money, that would be an expense on your profit and loss. And obviously we can get deep into, well, some of that's depreciate. You know, so we, we don't have to get too, too yeah. into the specifics. That's a general high level view. What I hear you saying is most people don't go to the balance sheet or understand the balance sheet. And if that's goofed up, and your your profit and loss says you made fifty grand or lost fifty grand. Greg doesn't trust it, but if he knows the balance sheet is correct, he now trusts that that profit or loss is correct. Now things may be wrong inside, right? Maybe we had something under cost of goods sold that should be under overhead or vice versa. But we at least Craig Greg at least is saying if the balance sheet is right and the the profit and loss says you made twenty grand this year, then by golly, you made twenty grand. Did I miss anything or is that right. win? That's it. Nope, okay. You got it. Cool. Keep going, yep, brother. I just want to make sure we didn't go too far ahead. Okay. So yeah, I mean, yeah, no, you're fine. I mean, those are those are basically, you know, what we do. Okay. Uh, and and you know, if you if you do those things, and and that's simple. But we, you know, and again, depending on the businesses, a lot of times service industries, and and I'll use me even as a CPA firm. You know, my my basic my biggest expense is my you know the salary of my employees. Okay. I don't have a lot of other things going on. So, so my, my, and my income statement is easy as well as my balance sheet. It's, there's not, I mean, I don't have, you know, a lot of, a lot of entries on either one as compared to, you know, we do, uh, you know, we do a lot of auto dealers as, as Mike knows. And, uh, you know, and, and a new dealer, there's actually four, you know, profit centers, you got new used service parts, those get a little bit more complicated. So, you know, it can be easy, but it's still it, just because it's easy doesn't mean that it that it, it 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 can be overlooked. You still have to take the time to make sure it's right. Tune in to the next episode for the continuation of this podcast. Congratulations! You are now sixteen percent smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.